This is Andrew for the Chosen Prime with a video review for Takar Tomy's Transformers Masterpiece MP39 Sunstreaker, which is now the official Masterpiece version of Sunstreaker here we have for our collections. Here you can see his box. It's standard size as all the other um, Autobot cars. And here you can see that he does come packaged in his vehicle mode, which is a Lamborghini Countach LP LP500S. Um, specifically, this is a super tuning kind of concept version. The one with the original G1 toy and the cartoon homage where it's got the intakes up top. But you can actually transform it to be a more accurate um, LP500S, and I'll show that off in a little bit. But here you can see here's the figure. You get the box. He does come in a standard um, plastic clamshell like all the other Autobot um, cars. As far as his accessories, he does come with a collector's card. Nice set of instructions. He comes with his uh, main pistol here. He comes with another pistol here that can actually store in uh, both vehicle and robot mode, and we'll show that off in a little bit. He comes with uh, two additional faces. And we'll show these off in detail in a little bit, but he's got this kind of happy face and angry face to go along with the one that's already pre-installed. He comes with a little alien mask here to homage that one uh, G1 episode, Hoist Goes to Hollywood, where he was uh, kind of an actor. He comes with a, an extra set of uh, mirrors here in case there's issues with these mirrors during transmission. And then finally, he comes with a little uh, masterpiece uh, version here of Chip Chase who's got a separate uh, wheelchair that's molded in one part and then the figure here that's uh, molded in one part. So let's go ahead and take a closer look here at the vehicle mode details for Sunstreaker. Taking a closer look here at Sunstreaker, you can see that he's got this nice glossy yellow paint throughout that's pretty consistent. He does have chromed intakes and his rear spoiler. A lot of nice paint detail here on the back. Um, painted rims, rolls nice and smooth. Just overall, a lot of nice detail. He's about uh, five and three quarter inches long from the front to his back, so he's kind of standard uh, length for a masterpiece car here. He Again, this is his uh, super tuning mode where he's got the intakes up top, and so you can actually flip it around, but before we do that, we can actually show how you can take his weapon here and like the other Autobot cars, there's a, there's a peg hole here on top of his vehicle mode where you can store the Viet gun in like that. As far as kind of uh, vehicle mode uh, details here, he does actually have uh, working um, scissor doors here. So we just lift up, and the doors are actually on a, a double hinge here. You can lift up the doors on each side. And actually, they're do, they do this because of uh, transformation. But it's nice that you have the ability to kind of lift them up if you like. He does have an opening um, front hood here, which is pretty cool. If you like, he does have uh, lifting uh, headlights here in the front. So you come to the underside, these little black buttons. If we push up on the black buttons here, the uh, little lights uh, here pop up. You can see they've got some nice detail to them as well. So they've added a lot of nice little bits and pieces to the figure here. As far as kind of um, getting between his two car modes here, you can see that by default, again, he's got the intakes up here on top. And then he's got the same back end as the G1 toy, where you had these ports that were originally for his shoulders. And so what you can do, if specifically for this part, we can actually take these and fold them out. You can see he's got standard taillights and then rotate these in. And then we can take this spoiler part here and push it in. And you see now you get a much cleaner back end that matches the actual um, car. So it's nice that they give us that option. In this mode, he also has the little uh, anti-aircraft uh, cannon here on his back, like he had in that one G1 episode when the Seekers were following them. So if we move these uh, spoilers out of the way, we can flip out the cannon here. And you can see he's got the uh, cannon as he had in that one um, G1 episode. He had a nice little bonus. Let me just close that up. And then, finally, for this mode, we actually take his gun, the smaller gun, the Electron uh, Pulse Rifle, and fold the handle back this way, and we'll do. We'll get uh, partially through to his uh, flipping this over, but in order to get to that point, essentially we we flip lift up the gull wing doors, we unpeg these sides here, and they peg here on the side. And the very first time you transform this guy, it's going to be a bit stiff as things kind of loosen up. And now we can take the entire back end here, or this part. And I find it's easier to actually go ahead and uh, further unpeg the back of the vehicle here to kind of get more clearance. And we can actually take this pistol, and this pistol can fit in this space uh, here, and you can close it up, and you can actually store this in his vehicle mode fully. 
But while we're at this point, we'll go ahead and we'll flip around um, his intakes here. So what we want to do is fold up on these uh, chrome pieces here to kind of get clearance. And then take it and you want to rotate it in on itself like this. And you can see how it kind of fills in um, the back of the vehicle mode. You want to make sure that these chrome pieces here are kind of uh, facing straight downward. And now we can close the vehicle mode back up. And it's a matter of just locking everything back together. And now we can take these intake parts here. We just got to make sure we rotate them so that smooths out. Um, the back end here, and we'll peg everything back together. And see here, now you can see you have a more accurate um, LP500S with the intakes kind of gone. And I think this is the mode they were able to kind of say that this toy could do so they get the official licensing to finally release a version of G1 Sunstreaker. So again, you have preferences if you want to kind of have uh, Sunstreaker look like this, look a bit more accurate, or look like the toy um, version of the character. And before we get onto his robot mode, let's get a little bit more closer up to detail here at the uh, chip chase that he comes with. Again, the figure is separate from the wheelchair here. Being see it's a nice little uh, standard um, minifigure like the other uh, figures that have come with these other Masterpiece figures. And you can see that uh, he does scale well here with Sunstreaker. So let's go ahead and get Sunstreaker transformed into his robot mode. So to transform Sunstreaker here, we want to start by lifting up on his doors, unpegging them on each side. And come to these panels again. We want to pop them downwards. And these kind of peg into the back of the vehicle here. We're going to lift up on the back canopy of this and then similarly unpeg the back here so this fully opens like that. We want to come to the underside here and the toes here will unpeg from the front. You can see the pegs that are there. And then the legs will accordion out on each side. like so. And then we want to make sure that when you fold the leg, you can fold it straight and then do that on both sides. Come to the interior here, these little panels here. For now, we want to just fold them kind of up and out of the way. These are the front hip skirts. And now we can bring the legs down. We'll come and do his feet first. So take the toe here and hinge it outward. And if we come to the underside, there's this little uh, heel piece here. You want to unfold it and the tire will actually it's on a double hinge here so you want to pull it um, outward so that it moves further out like that and then we want to fold it in on itself so that the wheel kind of sits flush into the foot like this and now we can take the entire toe and rotate it and fit it under the foot like that so we'll do the same thing on the other side take the toe unhook it Move this heel piece, utilize that double hinge to one, move it down. You can see how it's too far inward. So just kind of um, rock it. So it's just like that. And then we can rotate the foot back into place. These little panels here, we want to fold them down and out of the way. Come to the window here. Now this, you can see that here's where the mirror is and it's a separate little hooked on piece to the glass and you can see there's a hinge here. You want to kind of bring this piece outward, fold it in and it's going to be very, very tight the very first time. And then there's this little gap here in the leg where we can now close down and hinge the panel so that the mirror kind of sits inside of his leg. We can come to the inner panel here that's on this leg. And again, the very first time you fold this in, it's going to be tight. We fold that panel down. Now this back panel can go ahead and fold down and collapse and fill in the back of the leg. So we'll do the other side here. Fold it down. Pull out the mirror and the window here. Fold it in on itself. And you can see that again, this little mirror, when you collapse it and hinge it downward, it'll fit in there. And again, it's going to be very tight um, the very first time uh, you try to do it. And then we got his inner panel here we want to fold down. And there are his legs all finished. Now this next bit with this windscreen in the back here is the most complicated and kind of trickiest part of the transformation. It's not too hard once you kind of figure it out the first time. But we want to take the windscreen here and it'll unpeg from the front here and just kind of lift up just enough. 
fold down this panel, this little back panel here will flip up. And then if we look, this entire piece here is kind of on a swivel. And so you want to kind of just get enough clearance. And again, it can be a bit tricky to kind of rotate the windscreen here to the back, like so. We can now take those little uh, front hip skirts here and fold them down or rotate them down to get uh, the front of his legs. We can come to this piece here. It'll lift up. We can rotate it around and fold it over and there's his faux um, robo mode chest. So this piece here will all kind of pull down and hinge out from his backpack here. The arms will fold outwards and inwards like this. Lift up on the chest piece and you can see there's a little slide mechanism here. You want to lift up on that until it snaps and that'll lift his head up. His, uh, these pieces right here, these little pieces here, we want to flip them up here on each side. And when we're all said and done, they'll actually peg into little pegs here um, on the chest here and that'll help lock the chest in further. For his arms, these little pieces here will rotate 180 and they'll kind of find the right position. You only need to remember that for when you go back to his uh, car mode. The arms here, and again, this could be tricky the very first time, this piece will unhinge or unpeg from the side of the arm here, and then the hand will uh, kind of slide out with it on a double hinge. You want to fill this back up, so it's like that. Take the arm and slide it down, and then if you look real carefully, there, the elbow here is jutting, jutting out just a little bit, and so you want to push that so it's flush. And again, remember when you go back to car mode to push that back. And then now we can go ahead and collapse the arm down. And we want to rotate the arm so it's this way. And so we'll do the other side. Unpeg the uh, piece here from the arm so it hinges outward with the hand. And the very first couple times you do this, it's going to be a bit stiff. Extend the arm, push down on the elbow there. Then we can go ahead and collapse and cover up the arm with a double hinge and then make sure that this is on the underside. We can open up the fists and his thumb moves out to kind of fill out his hands on each side. So for his backpack we want to fold his intakes in um, similar to what we do when we want to get it so it's the clean car mode without the intakes. So fold up these panels rock it forward so you can go ahead and fold this piece inwards back onto itself. Make sure that these pieces here are kind of uh, now straight. So that these, these chrome pieces are now straight. The, uh, these little yellow uh, kind of uh, piston things, we want to fold them in and then fold in these sides here the intakes so that they're to the side and it will collapse down into the backpack like that. Take the entire backpack and there's a pin, there's a hinge here we want to rotate it around. If you don't already have uh, these uh, kind of uh, panels here folded out, if they were like this um, for his clean mode, you want to make sure that they're out and covered. Take the wind, uh, the, the spoiler here and move them um, inwards so that they are point pointing um, this way. And now we want to take the uh, this windscreen and hinge it up onto his back. From his uh, spine here there's this little kind of hook piece and we want to f uh, filter up kind of the backpack where the, uh, the spoiler parts here kind of sandwich around his windscreen and then that little hook will kind of lock in and lock his backpack. And then this part here will kind of fold up onto his back. These panels here on the side will fold over and kind of collapse his backpack um, either even further. You can see now he's got his kind of standard uh, kind of uh, intake backpack that he had before. And here is MP39 transformed into his robot mode. You just got to make sure that kind of everything is pegged together, these little front pieces and such. And so now we'll go ahead and take a look at some closer up details here for this masterpiece Sunstreaker. Take a closer look here at Sunstreaker. You can see that he looks very, very nice here in his robot mode. 
overall very clean um, for what all this car mode kind of transforms into. Um, just how nice and secure the backpack and overall the figure is. He's definitely the most uh, stable of all the masterpiece uh, centric so far, which makes sense with the uh, kind of transformation. And the transformation, while complex, um, is um, you know solid. It's secure. It feels um, good. I don't. I've transformed him multiple times. I'm not seeing any paint chips or any kind of issues. I mean, you do need to be a little bit careful, I'd assume, with some of the parts, but I've, I've had no real concerns with this guy. You can see here that he's got the animation style legs where he's got the black panels. And again, very nice, clean um, robot mode overall. As far as his head here, his head is on a pivot um, kind of joint here. You can come move forward and back as well as the ball joint. So you've got a lot of range as far as um, moving his head. The arms are on a rotation joint here. There's a hinge where you can ramp up, ramp up the elbow. This little piece moves out of the way. He does have a joint here to kind of move his arm inward. Bicep swivel, double jointed elbows. The hands here can rotate. They're also on a pivot, so you can pivot them forward and back. The thumb is separate, and then the one front of the hand here is separate. He can rotate at the waist. He does have a little back um, flap here, but it doesn't really stop him. He does have a dedicated ab crunch for better movement. Nice stiff legs outward, ratcheting forward, ratcheting back. Very nice thigh swivel. Nice, mostly double jointed knee. Whole lot of uh, posability there. The feet here are a nice uh, pivot, so he's got really nice uh, posability there. He does have that heel spurt, so he's nice and secure. And just really nice um, figure overall. Um, just, you know, amazing what they're able to do to turn that one a car into this robot mode as kind of simple as it is. Um, as far as his weight, he is pretty hefty for a masterpiece figure car here. He's five and five eight ounces, so he's pretty uh, pretty hefty. As far as his height, he's essentially you know six and a half inches here to his intake, so he's a pretty pretty tall figure, and he matches the scale of all the other figures. As far as his accessories, so one he does have his little mini pistol. This is the one that can store in car mode, and like the other vehicle. Um, Masterpiece bots is you know a matter of just fitting in his hand here with the peg and he can wield it But what's interesting about this particular weapon is if we take it and fold the uh, handle in and then fold the weapon part over He actually has storage in his leg for the gun on either side. So we flip this up this panel up There's now a peg hole That we can peg the weapon into on either leg And just pegs in and you can fold it in and he's got you know weapon storage for that smaller gun already built in into his robot mode. He does have his other larger blast here, which is painted a nice silver. And similarly, it's just pegs into his hand. It matches the kind of the gun that his brother had and the one he had in the cartoon. As far as his uh, faces, so this is the default face that he has installed. You can see it's a nice neutral face that homages the cartoon version of Sunstreaker. And replacing the faces as simply as kind of just lifting up on the panel on the front of his face here. And it pops off. So the first one we'll put in is the one where he's smiling. So here you can see he's got this nice little smiling smirk face that you can pose him with. Or alternatively, the final face he has is kind of his angry face. You can see where he's uh, yelling. So he's got more of a yelling face. So you do have multiple options as far as how you want to kind of have a different emotions here for Masterpiece Sunstreaker. And then the final little final bonus for uh, Sunstreaker here, of course, is that little alien mask. And you just you just slide on top of his face, and so he can have his alien mask like he had in that one again heist, post, hoist goes to Hollywood um, cartoon episode. Exploring his posability and the overall options for his robot mode, you can see he gets some nice solid just uh, standing poses, but then utilizing all the different joints in his knees and his feet, you can get some really dynamic um, action poses that he holds quite well. Again, utilizing the head joint here, utilizing the ab crunch. You can get some really um, solid and dynamic uh, action poses here out of uh, Sunstreaker, and you can hold, again, nice, nice poses like this, nice and securely. Overall, extremely nice engineering and build here from Takara Tomy. It's a really cool um, version of Sunstreaker, and definitely, you know, probably the most impressive uh, masterpiece Autobot um, we've gotten yet, as far as his overall engineering and uh, range of movement. Just a really solid uh, 
evolution of the Masterpiece line. So let's go ahead and take a look at some comparisons for uh, Sunstreaker here with other Masterpiece Autobots, including other Masterpiece Sunstreakers. Comparing MP39 here on the right with some previous unofficial attempts at Masterpiece Sunstreakers. In the middle, we've got Bad Cube Sun Surge, which is the more commonly found one. And it is the first attempt at a Masterpiece styled Sunstreaker. And on the left, we've got Omnigonic Spinout. Which, while is a nice design in, in, in theory, the overall execution on this figure is fairly poor. It's very loose and kind of poor QC version of this figure, and it's here as more of a curiosity, not as a true uh, Masterpiece Sunstreaker. And you can see how they all kind of stack up and how they all attempt to do a Masterpiece Sunstreaker. Uh, MP39 definitely matches a more animation style uh, aesthetic, whereas Spinout is more of a G1 toy, where Sun Surge is somewhere in the middle. You can see how their yellows differ. It's a bright, bit brighter yellow over here and a nice warm, consistent yellow. On uh, MP39, the glossy paint kind of is everywhere on the figure. I haven't seen any chips. And it's a lot warmer. And then here you can see overall design-wise, the this is cleaner overall. His legs, his backpack is a lot more cohesive and secure than the other two. And he's just not as loose as these other two figures. Um, this is a nice, solid figure. And this is really cool overall. You can see that other differences here. Um, Spin Out and Sun Surge have the ability to have the little rocket hand or missile hand that the G1 toy had. And unfortunately, the official effort has no part for that. When comparing posability, Sun Surge and MP39 are fairly close with nice ankle tilts, knees, arms, etc. They're very emotive uh, figures. But I would say MP39 overall does feel better and has a little bit more co consistent kind of look when you're posing him. Um, you can make Sun Surge a little bit taller if you like, but I would say that, you know, Sun Surge I really did enjoy. It's a good figure. It is, it is two years old. We did get this figure two years ago, but MP39 is quite a step up, and I'd say it's worthy of the upgrade. I like the better paint. I like the overall look. It just feels a lot more solid, a lot more for to transform, and so it, to me, he's wor MP39 is worthy of an upgrade if you already have Sun Surge. Vehicle mode comparisons for the three Masterpiece Sun Strikers. On the left, for reference, this is Omnigonics to spin out, this is Bad Cube Sun Surge, and this is the official Takara Tomy uh, Masterpiece Sunstreaker. You can see how they all do different, slightly different takes on G1 Sunstreaker here in his uh, car mode. All slightly different yellows as far as their paint, with this being the most pale, and this kind of being the kind of the best overall color here on the official one. Um, other slight differences are the bag cube figure here in the middle. You can switch out all of the chrome parts, including the wheels, to a silver painted silver similar to Omnigonix's one. And you also do get rubber tires on the bag cube one. But then here on the, you know, of course the official one, you get benefits like the, uh, the gold wing doors, or the scissor doors. You have things like the working uh, headlights here in the front. You have the ability to, you know, change out the rear end from the G1 toy style to the more car style like you can here on Spin Out. And you can flip around, of course, the uh, intakes up here on the top to get the more accurate car mode. And so just overall here in their vehicle modes, the official one just supremely outclasses the other two versions of Masterpiece Sunstricker here that we've gotten so far. Comparing Sunstricker here with his twin brother Sideswipe, this is the original MP12 uh, Masterpiece Lambor. You can see how just even the older one looks really good um, side by side here with this twin. Um, as you'll see, they have very similar um, vehicle modes, but uh, quite different uh, robot modes here. And then if we bring in the uh, recent release of MP12+, Plus, which is the kind of animation cartoon colored version, now comparing MP39 with both the old version and the new version of MP12, you can see that uh, MP12+, Plus here, he's got a bit brighter red as far as his paint. He's got more white, an actual glossy white on his feet, his legs, and etc. to kind of match the cartoon a little bit better. But surprisingly, you know, when put side by side here with uh, Sunstreak here, neither one of them stands out as being kind of better than the other as far as a version of Sideswipe. They both look good. I think uh, they've got a nice mix here with Sunstreak in the middle to kind of be both toy and tune accurate as well as pure tune accurate. So, you know, whether or not you want to get a newer version of Sideswipe or just stick with your old one, I think you can see here that this version of Sunstreaker uh, fits either one quite well. And vehicle mode comparisons. So again, this is the original MP12 and this is the new MP12+. Plus. And you can see how, you know, when you just look at the two uh, Lamborghini modes here, how well they stack up, how, you know, even though they look different in robot mode, how uh, similar they look here in their vehicle modes, like the original um, kind of G1 toys and the actual uh, cars here. And then bringing back in the Plus um, version here. Essentially, the main differences uh, of the new one, again, here in this vehicle mode are you get the brighter red on the figure, you get the, the larger Autobot logo, you get gray tires, 
And then less uh, kind of vehicle mode detail here overall, as well as the clear blue windshield to match, uh, you know, MP Sunstreaker here in the front. So to me, both versions of MP Sideswipe fit perfectly here with uh, this MP Sunstreaker. But it's personal preference if you wanted to kind of upgrade or get the newer one to kind of match the more anime style um, of uh, Sideswipe. But uh, both look great next to the official Sunstreaker. And you can see how well they look as twins here in their car modes. Comparing Masterpiece Sunstreaker here with some other official Masterpiece Autobots, both new and old. You can see here how MP39 fits in just fine with other Autobot cars like Wheeljack, Sideswipe, and Prowl in the robot modes. Nice same height, nice same overall aesthetic. And looks great um, beside them as well as some bigger figures. As well as, you know, he does match the newer aesthetic set aside by like figures like Inferno here with the slimmer animation style um, design. But then he looks, again, just fine next to, uh, you know, toy centric and older figures. And you can see just how perfectly he fits in with these other Autobots here in his robot mode. Comparing Sunstricker here in his uh, vehicle mode, you can see how good he looks next to other Autobots here. Um, specifically how good he looks next to um, older style figures like Wheeljack, Sideswipe, as well as Prowl. So he matches the standard car kind of style, as well as larger, more animation style figures like Ratchet and Inferno here. And of course he looks great next to Prime again in his truck mode. And he can um, fit in the trailer here. So MP39 here definitely is the best Sunstrick we've gotten so far, which makes sense coming from you know, Takara Tomy. And uh, MP39 is a, definitely a worthy addition to any Masterpiece Autobot collection. And here's a final little fun comparison. We've got Masterpiece Sunstreaker next to the original uh, G1 uh, Sunstreaker. So we have the oldest version of Sunstreaker as well as the most recent. And you can see um, how far we've come as far as toy engineering over these past decades. And it's fun to see how these two uh, look side by side. Again, you know, this was meant for a Diaclone um, um, toy collection and repurposed for Transformers. But it's interesting to see, uh, again, just these two side by side and just how uh, nice it is to have a nice perfect version of a cartoon Sunstreaker for our toy collections. And vehicle mode comparisons with the G1 toy. And you can see how the uh, mass piece kind of stacks up. It takes both tune and toy aesthetic um, details and kind of updates them how they do have the same uh, back end here where you can see there's little ports that were there that are homaged here on the new mass piece toy. And it's great to have this new mass piece uh, take on you know the original uh, transforming car robot as well as a new updated take here on G1 Sunstreaker for Masterpiece Collections. Some final thoughts here for MP39, uh, Masterpiece Sunstreaker from Takara Tomy. And finally, after all this time, we have an official Masterpiece Sunstreaker to add to our collections. Um, yes, we've had unofficial uh, attempts so far. Some have been nice, but this really does outclass um, those previous versions of Sunstreaker with a true Masterpiece version of the character. And then quite a, we've come quite a ways from original MP12 here, his brother Sideswipe, to get to MP39. I would say uh, MP39 here is probably my favorite Masterpiece figure to date. It builds upon um, some of the engineering and design uh, tricks they learned with uh, Masterpiece Megatron as far as his overall posability and his detail. And so you get a complex but friend transformation. He's a solid figure. I don't feel he's going to chip any paint. He's got all the right nice details. He's got the multiple car modes as far as the cartoon accurate and toy accurate car mode to the realistic car mode and you know, how it's all integrated. You get some great posability, the paint's nice, and it's overall is a really solid package, an excellent release to Takara Tomy. Now, Sun Trigger is my uh, favorite uh, Transformer to date, and I'm really, really happy to have this version. Would I recommend MP39 over previous releases like Sun Surge? Um, yes, I would. I would say he is worth the upgrade price, and I would say he's worth the price overall. We are getting a much better toy here with uh, MP39. It's, uh, to me, it's worth the value and the cost that he goes by. It's a very solid figure, very fun, and an excellent addition to any uh, Masterpiece collection. And saying that, MP39 is currently in stock from the Chosen Prime. If you'd like to add him to your collection, he is available now, so take care.